There we go. Two could play at that game, Sophia. Hello, everybody. (laughs) Welcome to this week's edition of the Rare Book Cafe. The book lovers rendezvous my co-host, Lee Lynn Ridge Books, Calhoun, Georgia. What are you giggling about, Lee? Uh, Well, I was giggling about your quick change uh, shirt there, Ed. (laughs) Uh, (laughs) Today, I'm at my local library. I want everybody to know your local library probably has great free rooms you can use, little conference rooms. You just schedule them on their website. The problem is they're not very good for uh, Zoom background. So I apologize for that uh, big white light. It's not a UFO back there. It's just the wall. Uh, well, I think we can excuse that. Maybe Alan can work miracles with a background for this. <laughs> what I'm going to be talking about is who restores books? Choose wisely. And mm-hmm. the, the, it's like, that's really important because there are different kinds of book repair professionals in the world. Our guest, Sophia Ogle. Um, this is a quick one this week. We understand that you're going to be giving a lecture at the American Bookbinding Museum, and we wanted to get a sneak peek from you from what's coming up there. All right. Yeah. Um, thanks for having me back. Here we are. Um, I'm giving a talk at the American Bookbinders Museum, uh, Saturday, March 30th at 11 o'clock Pacific. It's just, it's a Zoom thing. Anybody can sign up. Um, They're a nonprofit and and the tickets are only $10. And um, what I'm going to be talking about is who restores books? Choose wisely. And Mm -hmm. it's like, that's really important because there are different kinds of book repair professionals in the world. And um, there are book binders. There's book restorers like like me, and there's book conservators, which you know I have a book uh, a diploma in book conservation, but really what I do is restoration. And those three kinds of professionals work in different places. They have different goals. They have you know different thoughts about how things should be done, and it's basically like the difference between taking. A, a broken book or you know taking something that's wrong and taking it to the the wrong professional so let's say you have a broken leg and you're going to a doctor versus um you know a a, a surgeon versus it's like what what's wrong and how do you match it up with what you need mm-hmm. and i'm going to be working on that uh analogy a little bit for the talk so <laughs> uh, <laughs> Anyway, well, I can um, I might can help you with that, Sophia. Great. When I when I broke my leg in Boston, the uh, orthopedist who was on call in the emergency room that night came to me and he said, "I deal primarily in sports injuries, and that's not what you have." And so I have called in the trauma surgeon, who dealt with a whole different type of injury. So yeah. that's kind of the same thing. It, exactly. Right, let's see if we can get Lee's anecdote up there in front of the um, American Academy of <laughs> Bookbinders next week. Yeah, yeah. Um, I understand that you've got a couple of uh, slides that you might be able to share with us. Sure. Let's see if I can do that. Uh-huh. That'll be a first on this show, Lee. Yeah, that actually worked. <laughs> that actually worked. Yeah. Here we go. Whoa, impressive. All right, so that uh-huh. is my, um, that's where I'm going to be, the American Bookbinders Museum. They're, they're actually located in San Francisco, and they have a, 
it's a beautiful place. They have um, events there and they have um, just all the equipment and things like that. You can follow along through through history, as it were, of, of American book binding. And so I've got this uh, infographic that I've created. What do book pre repair professionals know? And I've got book binders here at the very bottom of this pyramid because that's the basic level. You have to learn how to bind a book before you can learn how to restore it. So you have to know, you know, box making, book binding and rebinding, like putting a new cover on a book. And then as it goes up the little pyramid here, the book restorers learn more skills and they tend to be on this side and the book conservators learn more skills and they tend to be on, on this other side of the pyramid. But it overlaps. They, this person might learn more about, you know, chemistry or book history. This person might learn more, you know, about fine binding or get more training. Um, but as you get up toward the top of it, uh, you've got fewer people. So it costs more money. They've got more training. And, you know, down here you have more people who can just make a book. So this is just one of the ways to think about the three different kinds of professionals. And let's see, I think I have one more. Clever. Here's one more uh, way to think about it. So here we go. This is a book restorer. I'm a book restorer. I understand book structures and how to preserve their value. I work to make books look like they did before they were damaged. And over here, Pretty I'm much got, you. Or do you, you yeah, fall on that camera? Pretty much me. That's me. Here's a book conservator. I studied chemistry and historical book structures. I always preserve the original materials and I document every step. And then here's the book. I could never do that. The documentation would kill me. No, I'm, I'm kind of there. Paperwork. Kind of there too, right? <laughs> it's just like on the other I, hand, when you were talking about the plates, the partial plate from the Wizard of Oz in our last show. Yeah, you were preserving original materials. Absolutely, documenting what you were doing with it. Yeah, that's why the pyramid thing. It's like it's not just divided. It's just you know, it's all built up to this this um, thing, uh, because you definitely do some of both. Although you know, a different a different person might choose a different result. They might go, I don't want you know a copy and the original i only want the original or they only want the copy because they want to make it look prettier um it's up to the client you know you can't make them do anything but you can inform them and that's hopefully what people are doing and then the other one is the book binder i am a book binder i make books and sometimes i fix them for people i am best at making new covers for books it's just someone who knows how to do that and i will stop sharing my screen because that was that was just a little uh, teaser for the whole presentation. There's a lot more to talk about. And hopefully, it's wisely, American Bookbinders Museum uh, talk that I'm going to be giving on March 30th. That so reminds me of the line from the first Indiana Jones where he's about to figure out the, the Holy Grail. And there's this ancient soldier that says to him, choose wisely. Right. So if we have a book that is in terrible shape and we're trying to decide what to do with it, will your video give us some pointers in how to make that decision? Yes, it will. And also, just to throw this out there, I have a chapter in the book that I wrote that is um, book damage and treatment options and lays it all out for you. So. Um, I will be covering some of that in the talk, and it, it is important to know like what can be done for you know some book damage. Is especially there's some there, I like I separate the kinds of treatments into in situ where you don't take the text block out of the cover for whatever reason versus where you take it apart and then put it back together. And one is not better than the other, but that's something that I, I talk about in the the book and I'll I'll be covering a little bit in the in the talk. Do you have a copy of your book, Candy, that you could show us? I do. I do. Let's see. Um yeah, right over here. <laughs> Are 
I've got a copy on my shelf. I could have had one right there. This is my copy. I, okay. I put a gold star on it. I was so proud of myself for getting it done. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're proud of you too. <laughs> we we tell you something that most people don't know that it was probably a little over three years ago now that uh, Sophia gave my name to Alan uh, to be involved with the show. I thought I was going to be a guest on the show. That's how I we didn't got know stuck I was going to be you? stuck oh, here for goodness. three years. Oh gosh. Yeah, you don't know what you've done to us. I had I had a good feeling about it. I knew I knew this is your fault, Sophia. Oh, your fault. Well, you're you're welcome. Yeah. <laughs> but he took All right, right to everybody. it. All right, everybody. Thanks for joining us on the Rare Book Cafe, the Book Lovers Rendezvous. Rendezvous back with us here next week or when we ever pop up on your subscribe list for uh the next edition. Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, and wherever good podcasts are given away for free. Bye-bye, everybody. Bye-bye, Lee. Bye-bye, everybody. Bye. -bye, everybody. Bye.